What's going on guys? So today we are going to be doing a review. I haven't done a review in so long. I think the last review that I did was for Saltburn and that was at the end of last year and we are officially almost six months into this year and I haven't done a review since then. Today's review is going to be on a particular TV show that has recently taken over my life and a lot of other people's lives recently. Also it's been taking over my brain space, my mind cavity. I can't stop thinking about it like ever. Today we are going to be re be reviewing 911. Now, I'm only going to be reviewing a few episodes from the newer season because those are the episodes that everyone is literally talking about for reasons we will get into today. So, I have my notes here pretty 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 exclusive. Today, we are going to be talking about a specific couple that has recently been added to the 911 community or the 911 family, and that is Buck and Tommy, aka Tevin. Their ship name officially we could not pick a ship name to save our lives there was so many and Tevin is the one that ABC chose for us I personally like someone came up with the ship name Firefly and I thought that was really cute because Buck fights fires and Tommy's a pilot he flies Firefly that is adorable today I'm going to be reviewing episodes 3 4 5 and 6 yeah we're gonna be reviewing those four episodes today and I'm really excited to get into it so Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the video. So me and my mom watched 911 when it first started coming on. We started watching it and then we kind of stopped because I'm a bit of a hypochondriac and I don't usually watch shows that are like medical shows or involve medical emergencies because they make me freak out about my health. And then recently, I want to say a few months ago, it started coming on my For You page for TikTok. People talking about eddie and buck being like a thing and i was like oh my god for real so i started watching i was like okay let me just start watching it again so i started from season two because between you and me i literally hate season one of 911. like it's a good season but it's just buck in season one literally makes me want to pull my hair out like i literally hated him in season one i started from season two watched all the way up until now season seven's coming on me and my mom have been watching it together and it has been amazing and i love that i started re-watching it before Buck and Tommy became a thing not to be like the person that's like oh my god I was here before that but it's just like I love that I got to be there to see the build-up of it it's really cool so just a little backstory on how I recently got back into watching 911 so now we're gonna actually get into the review so we're gonna start with episode 3 which is when Tommy is reintroduced into the cast um, if we remember, Tommy was in the show before, in like season two and three, I think. He was only in a couple episodes, and he was usually in the beginner episodes. You know what I mean? Like, Hen Begins, Chimney Begins, Bobby Begins. He was in all of those episodes as a former firefighter of the 118. And I did go back and rewatch those episodes just to see Tommy. Don't judge me. Episode three is when Tommy is reintroduced, and some people knew that Tommy was going to come back to be Buck's love interest. I did not. So when I saw when Hen went to get a go ahead to take a chopper to the coast of Mexico and Tommy walked out, I was shocked. I was like, oh my God, that's Tommy. Tommy, what are you doing here? But I really loved that, that he came back to like help her because like we all know how Tommy was when Hen first joined. When first, when Chimney first joined because he was better when Hen first joined. He was just like didn't really know how to stand up to his captain but when chimney first joined that man <laughs> i so he comes back to help him go to the coast of mexico to save bobby and athena and this is when tommy and buck first meet now we don't see when they first meet even though i would love to have seen that they are on their way to save bobby and athena and tommy's not supposed to be doing this he's doing it undercover just to help him because Hen is an old friend that used to work together at a certain point in the episode someone comes through on his headphones and is asking for him to talk to the chief of fire chief of the fire i don't know what he is but his uh, his higher up his authority his captain asks him he's like firefighter i know you're not doing what i think you're doing and captain wilson of the 118 better not be with you chief simpson trouble reading can't hear think he bought it 
and then when when they pan to Buck, which I didn't catch it the first time, but when I rewatched the episode, when they pan to Buck, you can see like him slightly smile at the fact that Tommy did that for them, which he addresses later in the next episode. But that was like I didn't catch it the first time and then I saw that he was like slightly smiling which lets you know that he was endeared by the act that Tommy did that for them because literally all of them could have lost their jobs because they were doing this because they didn't have the go ahead from authorities. They just decided to do it because Hen is literally a lifesaver and she knows all and she always knows when something's wrong and she was right. So that was like kind of the beginning of Tommy and Buck from episode three. I did not know that Tommy was going to be sticking around obviously to be Buck's love interest. I just thought they brought him back for that one episode and he was going to be gone. So I was like, okay, cool. That was a cool like cameo. Like Tommy came back. That's so sweet. Then episode four rolls around. So now we're going to get into episode four. At the beginning of the episode, Tommy is giving Buck a tour of harbor and like the planes and like what they do and what they do and like his job and it's really cool and buck is so he's just so in awe of like everything like someone i think it was hen said that like buck if he was a dog he would be like a golden retriever like that is so him like he is so golden retriever coded it's actually insane and i love it so much so like he's giving him a tour and like tommy asks him he come on you didn't call me because you just wanted to see the toys. You're thinking of changing things up, aren't you? And he's like trying to play it cool. He's so, he's so like not subtle, but like it's the way Tommy doesn't catch it. Okay, so aside from worrying that Cap and Athena were at the bottom of the ocean, yeah, fine. I guess that night was the most fun I'd had since being struck by lightning. And Tommy is like, well, There's no rule that says you can't get certified and still stay at the 118. I fly for fun on my days off. Yeah. I can give you lessons if you want. Really? Sure. My fees are competitive. He's like, yeah, like, you should let me buy your beer. Like, it sounds like an initiation of a date, but obviously my first time watching it, it didn't seem like that. So I'm like, oh, he's just asking him to get a beer. And Tommy's like, I'd love that, but I, I gotta take a rain check. I have something that should be arriving right now, actually. And then this is where the jealousy kicks in, is when Eddie comes in and they're going to a fight together. And Buck being a jealous person he is like coming from someone who is kind of a jealous person i get it you know so they go off and tommy's like let, let me know if you want to go up yeah i'll do that sometime so then it's probably like a couple days later maybe the next day they're working together and buck asks eddie uh, hey you never said how was vegas quick trip i'll bet how long does it take to chocolate one hour and how was the fight He's really trying to get intel on Tommy. He just doesn't know it yet. But he was trying to get intel on like what like their friendship and like how it's so good or whatever. But it's understandable because like if you have a best friend that you hang out with all the time and then your best friend gets another best friend or maybe not necessarily even a best friend, but just another friend that they start hanging out with, it can be a bit of an adjustment because then they have to divide their attention between you and this other person. And it can feel a bit like abandonment but it's easy to feel that way he's like so when do you think you're gonna see him again and then eddie tells him that they're going to this karaoke trivia thing like on wednesday and then this is okay i feel like i should say i feel like i should have said this earlier but when i first started watching 911 again i was under the impression that i was a buddy shipper right i was like i think evan and eddie would be like really cute together. They have the chemistry. Obviously their friendship is really, really strong. They have the chemistry. They have all these like things that would make them a great couple, I think. And and then it's like all these things that Eddie is doing makes me like, oh no, like that is not. So like when he acts, he's saying that they're going to this trivia thing on Wednesday. And he's like, what are you doing Wednesday? Me, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm free, uh, totally free. Wednesday is clean slate, free. You think you could watch Christopher for me? Yeah, that's my soul, but she's already done it twice this week for me. Do you realize the hands that would have been thrown if someone did that to me? That is actually insane. Like, that is such a cold move. Like, and he obviously, I guess, didn't realize. How do you not realize, though? Like, that is so insane. Like, your best friend, you're going out with one of your friends, and your best friend is like, oh, yeah, I'm totally free Wednesday. Like, I have nothing to do. He's like, great. Watch my kid for me. Mm -mm. that was just a cold move i was like wow he really did that so then we cut to the next scene where buck is venting 
about Tommy and Eddie to Maddie. And he's like, he's already been over three times. Eddie just met the guy like two weeks ago. Christopher thinks he's so cool. And Maddie being like the reasonable one is like, well, you think Tommy is cool too. He's so jealous that like Tommy has like, it's like when Eddie first joined the station, like he's so annoyed at the fact that he's fit in so well and is so comfortable without having to like put in the work or like just he first he just got there and he's already comfortable with eddie like it's the same thing when eddie first joined the station he was so annoyed that eddie was just so comfortable in what he was doing and he hadn't been there for so long so he is so mad that eddie invited tommy to go with him to the pickup basketball game that the first responders do every other thursday eddie on his fridge has a day calendar under takeout menu thursday B B P U W backslash Tommy and it's circle. And Maddie's like, what well, you don't like basketball. Which is why I say no, but now he's going with Tommy and he's got it circled. And Maddie being so petty, she's like, Is it circled with a heart around it? I love Maddie. Maddie is such like the logical like sister. It's like, why are you upset? Like you think Tommy is great too. And it's like understandable why he's upset, but it's like it's a new friendship. It's the same thing with a new relationship. New relationships are always gonna feel like, oh my God, this is so fun. Like it's something new, you know? So then Buck initiates this plan that he needs to get Eddie's attention somehow. When Eddie is not even the person he's trying to get attention from, he doesn't know it yet, but he's not the person he's trying to get attention from. So he's at work working out or whatever like trying to get Eddie's attention because Eddie's on the phone with Tommy obviously and he's trying to get his attention by like lifting weights and like acting like he needs a spot hey Buck so then he orders a basketball from Amazon <laughs> and Tom Eddie already knows Buck doesn't like basketball everyone knows that Buck doesn't like basketball even Chimney so he orders the basketball and he's trying to get Eddie's attention uh, hey Eddie I was uh, uh, I was thinking we should we should get a hoop huh uh-huh mission failed we'll get him next time how do you feel I would literally never leave my house again I'm like that is so embarrassing like He's just trying so hard for no reason, and it's actually really funny. So then, obviously, he has to come up with a different plan. So he asks Chimney to go shoot hoops with him at the, like, pickup first responders basketball game or whatever. So Chimney goes, and he's like, so what's with the sudden interest of, like, basketball? Because every time me and Albert, his brother, would ask you to go, you would deny it. He's like, well, like, we're going to be brothers-in-law, and, like, I just thought it would be a good way for us to bond, you know, before the wedding. And then, of course, you know, once they get there, Chimney realizes why they're there, because guess who else is there? Howie! Hey! Hey, Kevin! Hey, guys! What? <laughs> you guys, wow, what are the odds? They join, they join the basketball game, and you can see as time goes on, as they're, like, winning, and Tommy and Eddie are, like, so, such good friends together, that he gets more and more agitated by that fact. This scene is funny until it's not. Cause he's so agitated and like then he tries to like go up against Eddie and Eddie steals the ball from him and the only logical thing that Buck could think to do is to literally maim his best friend. Like literally like injure his best friend and he doesn't even realize he's doing it until he's done it so then he tries to make it up to eddie by being like oh i can drive him to the hospital i can get my jeep but tommy's like no no, no it's cool like i drove him here i could take him which obviously adds more fuel to the fire it makes him more jealous of him and tommy so tommy comes to buck's apartment so when he opens the door and he sees his tommy he's like obviously shocked uh hey hey, hey tommy can we talk uh, yeah, yeah, come, come on in. So then he tries to offer him a beer, and Tommy's like, no, it's cool, like, I'm not staying long. I just wanted to, like, clear the air. And Buck is obviously confused, so he's like, clear the air about what? And so he tells him... Obviously, I've been the cause of some bad blood between you and Eddie, and I just want you to know that was never my intention. And Buck, like, taking accountability for his actions, he's like, there's no 
bad blood because there isn't he still loves eddie as a best friend he's just jealous of him and tommy and the way i this is such a side note but the way first of all the way that tommy calls buck evan and not buck probably because they're not that close they don't really know each other and buck hasn't corrected him saying oh people call me buck so obviously he likes the fact that tommy calls him evan because nobody else calls him evan except his parents but his parents are so annoying we don't want to talk about them one the fact that he calls him evan and not buck and two the way he says his name is so funny but also just so endearing at the same time because he always says it the same way he's like evan evan so, Every time he says it, it's like he's saying it as a question. And I think it's so funny. So then Buck obviously goes on to tell him that like he's he was jealous of their friendship and like he thinks that Eddie's mad and Tommy tells him he's No, he's not. In fact, he feels bad. We both do. Nobody meant to exclude you, Evan. Which I'm like, how did you not realize? Like I understand Tommy might not have realized, but like Eddie how did he not realize? Which is, I'm not saying like he can't have other friends. Like Buck said, he can have other friends. But it's like, dang, you didn't realize that you were leaving Buck out that much. That he literally had to hurt you in order to get your attention is actually insane. So then Tommy admits to Buck that he was jealous of the 118. Yeah, you're not the only one. I was super jealous. All of you? The 118? How it's become like a family over there? I mean, how you all were willing to put everything on the line for one another? I wanted to be a part of that. Because when Tommy was a part of the 118 before, it was a mess. Like, they were still all, like, friends. But, like, the captain was, like, was, like, just bad. Like, Captain Gerard, he was bad. If you've seen those episodes, he was, he hated Hen because she was a woman and probably black and probably lesbian. He hated Chimney because, I don't even know why he hated Chimney. He just didn't like, and they, they all, like, are the, because, like, Chimney is Asian and they literally hated him hen is lesbian black and a woman and he literally hated her so it's just like the environment he was in was like like 118 was so bad before it was good so and they weren't like a family even though they like kind of portrayed them to be like that like they would all have dinner together and they would you know go on calls together but i just don't think that they were truly like a family like the 118 is now so Buck eventually, like he takes, he feels bad, and he's like, well, "Hey, you, you were, and you did. You even made fake mouth static at the fire chief." Because the only reason that they got the chopper was because Tommy like lied and was like, "Oh yeah, like I got word on this. Like I'm gonna take them to the coast real quick." That was literally the only reason why they got to save Bobby and Athena. So he really did more for them than he like realizes he did. And then obviously Buck brings up like he did faith, m fake mouth static to the fire chief. Which Buck feels, because that is something Buck does. Buck, if you know Buck, if you watch the show, Buck throws himself into these situations just be just so his family the 118 doesn't get hurt and but bobby has called him out on this like i forgot what the situation was but it was something where he deliberately made himself a target so that nobody else would get hurt and buck was like yeah so nobody else would get hurt because that's how much he cares about the 118 and how much of a family they are and so i think buck saw a little bit of himself in tommy when tommy did that because he literally put everything on the line just so that his friends wouldn't get in trouble which is why I think they're so good for each other because like they're alike in a lot of ways but they're also very different which is I think they're so great together and then he goes to tell him I mean that's why I called and asked for the tour you know it wasn't about me maybe leaving the 118 Tommy I, I just wanted to get to know you and I think this in that moment is when it clicked for Buck that he wasn't really trying to get Eddie's attention. Because maybe he was, because Eddie is his best friend. But he was really trying to get Tommy's attention. Because Tommy, I mean, he already thinks he's cool. And then you go back and watch the episodes. And then you kind of start, like, putting the pieces together. And obviously, the sh in the show, they're going to try and throw us off. Be like, oh yeah, he's trying to get Eddie's attention because Eddie's his best friend. But it's just kind of clear. Once you rewatch it and you, like, analyze, you're like, oh that makes sense you know so yeah he admits to him that he was trying to get his attention and tommy is just as confused as the rest of us probably are when we watch that episode I was trying to get your attention has been kind of exhausting my attention like 
yeah, his attention? What are you talking about? And he's like, I literally maimed my best friend. And I'm like, you know what? That is so real. You literally did maim your best friend just to get Tommy's attention. And that is actually insane. So then Buck starts to do what Buck does best and ramble because he's put himself in a bit of an awkward situation by accidentally confessing that he likes Tommy. And so he starts to ramble and then Tommy does the only logical thing that he can think to do to shut Buck up. And my sister says there are uh, better ways to get someone's attention. Oh my God. Oh, this is a moment in history. Take a picture. I swear, I wish I was recording when me and my mom watched this episode together because our faces were priceless. Like, we were not expecting, I'm sure with everybody else watching the show, was not expecting that to happen. It was just a, such a, like, lives were changed that day. It was actually crazy because people have been talking about Buck being bi for the longest, like, probably since season two because they have been subtly dropping hints that Buck has been by since season two. That's when Eddie joined the season. But the, the one thing that sticks out in my mind, which there are plenty of signs that they threw out that Buck could potentially be by, but the one that sticks out to me is when Maddie comes back and stays with um, Buck and Buck is like venting about Eddie and like how cool he is. This is when they finally come to terms and they're like friends now. And Maddie says, well, does this, does this boy crush on Eddie mean that you're finally ready to move on from Abby? That is an insane thing to say, especially because she didn't know that her brother was bi. So that is a, just an insane, and obviously she's saying it in a joking way, but that is just an insane thing to say, you know? So that is one of the like, signs that they kind of threw out into the show that make me like that sticks in my mind it's like oh he's potentially could be bi and they just happen to make it canon and I love that because you don't realize how little bi representation there is in the media unless it's like an LGBTQ based show. You know what I mean? Like Heartstopper and Red, White and Royal Blue, like those are LGBTQ based movies and shows. Like that's the whole like kind of point of it. It's more likely to be by representation in those shows, which there is, rather than media that doesn't involve LGBTQ or isn't like the plot is the LGBTQ. Like 911, the plot is not LGBTQ. The plot is, you know, firefighters and the job and you know them going through things like that is the plot but 911 does a really good job at incorporating like the lgbtq in to their th stuff like we even it doesn't have to be this 911 we go to lone star tk and carlos is gay representation paul trans representation if you really think about it and i could be wrong like correct me if i'm wrong but like there's always really most of the time either gay or lesbian representation in the media and there's never really bi sexual representation in the media because honestly a lot of people don't consider bisexual people to be valid because a lot of people think oh they're just confused they don't know what they want oh pick a side like why why can't you pick a side when i mean like gay and lesbian people they didn't choose to be that way that's just how they're how they are how they're wired they are it's attracted to both genders so yeah that's my little spiel on bisexuality in the media <laughs> so then after they kiss this is when it really clicks into buck's brain that like oh yeah that's what this whole thing was it's like i was attracted to tommy tommy is so i love tommy but like people like tommy who are just so cool calm and collected all the time even the situations like this make me insane because i know if i was in that situation i would literally be buck uh, it's saturday yes i i i am free so let's say i come by around saturday like stumbling over my words trying to find something to say like my brain is literally goo it's melting i don't know what just happened so tommy plays it cool and he's like i gotta shift cross town traffic Came in the car this time. So what are you doing Saturday? You still owe me that beer. You free? He's so cool. Like literally Buck is like, Tommy's cool. Tommy is cool. Like in more ways than one. Not just because he's a pilot. But like his personality is just cool. Like he's always just cool, calm, and collected. And I 
that's one of the things that I really love about him because it balances them because Buck is that like hyper doesn't really think before he does golden retriever person and then Tommy is the cool calm and collected like low-key black cat but like not even black cat because he's not that cool calm and collected but they just balance each other out and I love that about them so that's how we end episode four which that was so much in one episode like that's when we really got the Tevin content like that that episode uh I I can't even tell you how many times I rewatched that episode because it was just like it didn't feel real I was like did they really just make by but canon and they did and I really appreciate them for that thank you ABC thank you for doing what Fox couldn't do in six whole seasons thank you so now we move on to episode five this episode man so we start off the episode with the date that buck and tommy go on and when i tell you the entire time i was watching this scene i wanted to sink into the floor the secondhand embarrassment was so strong i don't even know how i really got through it so they're on the date and they're having a really good time they're they go to this like pizza shop that's supposed to be out of the way and you know buck being self-conscious because his self-consciousness is understandable as someone who's trying to figure out their sexuality and is like dabbling into their sexuality that like he feels like especially for men i feel like it's very not saying it's harder for men than it is women but when, when men are trying to figure out their sexuality it's a fact that men get more criticism for exploring their sexuality than women do most of the time most of the time while they're on the date he's kind of looking around like making sure nobody's watching them or making sure like nobody they know is there and tommy notices this so he's like <laughs> nobody's looking at us Evan. uh what we're just two guys having dinner nobody cares which is true they could just be friends having dinner but of course in your mind when you know that you're on a date you think everybody else knows that too the mind is a crazy thing. Buck asked Tommy about his like, kind of like his coming out journey, like if he was always out on the job. And Tommy tells him that he wasn't. When he was in the 118, it was, you know, a very weird, regressive place. And like, it didn't feel safe for him to be out in that environment. And that he was also figuring himself out. When he left the 118 and joined Harbor, that was when he really started to like be himself and not hide those parts of himself. Like, it's not like he goes around waving a rainbow flag being like, oh my God, I'm so gay or so bi or whatever he is. Cause we don't really know his sexuality, but he just didn't hide that part of himself. But also I want to note, I mean, it, this doesn't mean anything, but I went back and watched the episodes that Tommy was in before. And he did mention that he had a girlfriend in one of those episodes. Once again, that doesn't mean anything like, Cause then it made me think oh so he's bi but that also doesn't mean that he really was because there are plenty of gay men that date girls before they figure out that they actually like men so then like buck is so defensive for no reason like not defensive in like an aggressive way but he feels the need to tell tommy that he's an ally when he's more than an ally okay listen this this is my first date with a dude but i'm not weirded out you know i mean I, i'm an ally uh every pride month I, I put a rainbow on my instagram i'm you know oh tommy is just so like kind of taken back because he's like okay like that's great he's like this is what i mean <laughs> this is what i mean when i'm like tommy is so like cool and like smooth and it drives me crazy because he's because because he decides to say that's good then i guess it's just me that makes you nervous are you joking i would have folded so fast like what are you talking that is just a bro is this the way he says it too i'm like you are so so then this is where the date starts to go downhill and the secondhand embarrassment kicks in hard. So Eddie walks in with Marisol and he he sees Tommy first. So he's like, Tommy, in the most normal, normal voice you could ever imagine. He's like, Tommy, Tom, can, I cannot express to you, Tommy's face was priceless. Tommy, hey. Tommy looks so like terrified in that moment like i thought buck would have been buck was terrified buck turned around like he was held at gunpoint hey buck 
Hey, you two guys. But Tommy's face was just so priceless because he just looks so terrified in that moment. Because that is like the first time I think we see his cool, calm, and collected like persona break. Because he definitely does not look cool, calm, and collected in that moment. So then Buck slowly turns around like he's being held at come point and for some reason eddie feels the need to make buck's presence known to every single person in that restaurant because tell me why he decides to literally shout buck's name across once once tommy's like fixes his face he's back into his like cool comic collected persona because like he knows how to play it off buck does not buck literally makes it more awkward than it had to be hey you two guys are hanging out it's so great yeah we're just grabbing a bite and we we're gonna go see a movie nice and then we're gonna go find some hot chicks because uh, you know hot chicks love firefighters <sighs> and it gets worse he doesn't stop tommy is so petty bro tommy is so petty because they're talking about like you know how she's gonna move her stuff into eddie's apartment eddie's like i guess you can never have enough closet space ain't that the truth right evan all right the betrayal is real the betrayal like he didn't out him but it's just like what do you mean by that and buck's face is literally priceless he's like why would you say that <laughs> Bro, Tommy got jokes, and that's why I love Tommy. Because Tommy doesn't even really take anything too seriously. But it's, like, he does, but he doesn't. So then, once Eddie and Marisol start walking away, and, like, they say their goodbyes, Tommy's like, yeah, like, we'll see you later. And Buck, uh, Buck is like, You guys have a great night. Uh, yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you too, bro. Uh. In, in the six seasons that we have seen Buck and Eddie interact, when has Buck ever called Eddie bro? So then, obviously, it's, like, so embarrassing because Tommy realizes what Buck is doing. And he doesn't hold it against him, but he is just... I think he feels like Buck is obviously uncomfortable. So when they're about to go to the movie, they're waiting outside for their car. Buck is trying to make, like, casual conversation as if what just happened didn't happen. And Tommy is obviously kind of, like, brushing it off. Like, he's making conversation, but he's, like, brushing it off at the same time. And so a car pulls up and Buck is like, uh, Hey, is this, this ours? No, it's mine. I think I'm gonna skip the movie. Why? What do you mean? Evan, I think you're adorable. I don't think you're ready. It's understandable by why, and Tommy did understand. It's understandable by why Buck would react that way. Because this is his first date with a guy, or as he puts it, his first date with a dude. Oh my god, like, oh my god. He's just super, not paranoid, but just self-conscious of what he's doing. And he doesn't realize that other people don't really care. I mean, obviously he doesn't want Eddie to know yet because, like, it's new. But Eddie is just going to think that they're hanging out. Because they already went through that thing of, like, you know, you were jealous of our friendship. So that he's obviously just going to think that they're just hanging out. But Buck doesn't realize that, so he makes a complete fool of himself. So he leaves him at the restaurant, which is super embarrassing for him. It would be embarrassing for anyone. So then he goes to vent to Maddie, part two. Maddie, I love that he can just go to Maddie and like talk about anything. Like I love that their their relationship as siblings is so strong. It's so it's so adorable. So he goes to vent to Maddie about the date. And Maddie didn't even know he had a date. So she's like, is there anyone I know? He's like, no. So he's trying to tell her about the date without really telling her about the date. Or like telling her who he went with. We, we picked a place kind of out of the way. Or so I thought. Because we're sitting there. And Eddie and Marisol walk in. So Eddie knows this person. And I guess I'm feeling caught off guard because I lie. I make it seem like we're just hanging out. Which Eddie thought anyway. And Maddie's trying to guess who it is. She's like, are you dating a married woman? Isn't a celebrity? Who it is isn't the point. The point is, I lied to my best friend's face. And in his state of rambling, he accidentally comes out to her. As you can imagine, the night ended pretty quick. He left me standing outside the restaurant, and I just, I feel like a fraud. I'm, I'm sorry, who left you outside the restaurant? My date. Can we go back to the pronoun? And he once again feels the need to express that he is an ally yeah okay i was, I was on a date with a guy again not not really the point mm, it could be very much the point well it shouldn't be though right i mean 
I'm an ally. So, so now you're you're more than an ally. So Maddie obviously is shocked and she's like trying to just process the information she just found out. But she, her being the supportive sister she is, she's like, I don't think you're a fraud. I, I just think that maybe you're not sure of your own feelings yet. And if there's something that you need to tell Eddie, you will, just in your own time. So then we skip to Eddie is at Buck's place and he's hiding from Marisol because they're going through their issues. And he's like venting to Buck about Marisol and he doesn't know what to do. And then he, you know, is like, You and Tommy have the right idea. Stay single. Hang out with the boys. Which that is like kind of crazy. Like I'm like, if I was Marisol and I heard him say that, I would be like, okay, then you can be single. Like it's just, that was an insane thing to say in my opinion. I was like, wow, he really said that, but whatever. Buck takes this as an opportunity to finally come clean to Eddie. And he tells him- It was a date when you and Marisol ran into me and Tommy when you were on a date. His first thought isn't like, oh my God, you and you and Tommy were on a date. His first thought is- Wait, Tommy's gay? Which I think is just so funny. Like, I don't know why, but I think that is just, that that's his first thought. That not like, oh my God, you and you and Tommy were on a date. Like you both might be gay. He's like, wait, Tommy's gay? Which makes me think that maybe Eddie suspected that, <laughs> that maybe Eddie suspected that Buck was bi in the past. But like maybe like pushed it out of his mind. Like he might have thought, maybe Buck is bi, or maybe he likes like men. He's like, mm, nah, probably not. Buck is obviously feeling very vulnerable in this state that he just told him that he was on a date with a guy. He obviously needs reassurance from Eddie that this doesn't change their friendship. So he asks him, "Is that weird?" No, absolutely not. I mean, this doesn't change a thing between us. Okay. Then Buck tells him, like, well, it doesn't really matter because Tommy, like, broke up with me and he doesn't think I'm ready. And Eddie's like, well, what do you think? And Buck tells him that, like, he can't stop thinking about him because, like, me too. So he's like, well, I think you should call him. Like, if you think that you know what you're ready for, then you should call him. And he tells him, don't walk away from something before you even know what it is. And he is preaching to the choir because he should practice what he preach. Okay, so then we fast forward to the end of the episode where Buck and Tommy meet up for coffee. And so they meet up, Buck gets Tommy a coffee, and I think it's so cute. He tries to guess what Tommy's like coffee order is, and he obviously gets it wrong. I, I, I got your coffee. I, I didn't know how you take it, so I, I just to guess. Mm, so not like that. <laughs> so then he... They, they sit down to talk and he's like, uh, so you said before that you don't think I'm ready. And the truth is, I don't know what I'm ready for, but I am ready for something. And, and I think maybe that something could be with you. Like, it's just so, I love to see Buck's maturity from season one to now. Because like, if you go back and watch Buck from season one, who is that person? Like, we don't know him. From now, like, Buck has grown so much, like, emotionally and, like, maturity-wise that it's just, like, we love to see it. We love to see the character development blossom and bloom into something so, like, beautiful, you know? Then he's like, Come with me to my sister's wedding. What? I want you to be my date at my sister's wedding. Evan. And then he tells him, like, I'm serious. Like, you already know half the people there and she wants to meet you. And I think it's something about that, that Buck has already told his sister about him, even though he didn't really mean to. But it's something about that that makes Tommy, like, think, like, okay, maybe this could be, you know, a thing. Like, maybe we could give this a chance. Because you can see it in his face, like, when he's like, and she wants to meet you. He's, like, almost taken back, but, like, endeared at the same time. Because he's like... Wow, you already told your sister about me. Like, you must be really serious about this. Come on, I'm, I'm serious. Listen, you, you already know half the people there, and, and, and she wants to meet you. So then he accepts his invitation, and it's just so adorable. It's like the, the blossom of a new relationship. It is so cute. I'm so obsessed with them. I can't. Like, I need Tommy to stick around. Like, for I need them to be in game. And I know the buddy shippers are going to come at me and be like, no, no, no. 
life. And it's like, I, I understand you, right? I used to be, I'm not even saying I'm not a buddy shipper anymore, but like, am I willing to lose buddy for Tevin? Yes. And I'll tell you why before we get into episode six. Quick break. I'll tell you why I'm willing to lose buddy for Tevin. Obviously, Buck and Eddie have a great relationship, a great friendship. They are the best friends I've ever seen. They trust each other entirely. He literally made Buck Chris, Chris's legal guardian in case he dies. And a lot of you are gonna use that as fuel to be like, that's why they need to be together. But let me tell you, Buck is so, he needs someone to ground him. And Tommy, I think is that person. One, he's not that much, but he's quite a little bit older than, than Buck right i don't know exactly how old he is but he's older than buck he's always the cool calm and collected one in the relationship and i think that balances buck out so well and also and another thing they're in the same line of work they are both firefighters they don't work together like buck is a firefighter and tommy is a firefighter that flies like he's a pilot but if we think back to buck's older relationships with the women all majority of those women left him because of his line of work like Allie she saw that a fire truck fell on him and she literally left him as soon as he got out of the hospital I'm not saying it's her fault because I understand it's a lot to take in when you're with someone that's in that line of danger and you have to think about what if they die and I lose them one day that is a lot to take in but it's also the fact that you knew what he was before you dated him that is like you knew what he was why would you get with him anyway but some people think they can handle it and then they can't and that is totally fine. Natalia. Natalia, he shouldn't have even dated Natalia. His latest like breakup. She literally, they went out and then she saw how chaotic his life was. And then she kind of broke it off. Like, okay, I just need a minute. And then she dated him anyway and then broke up with him because his life was too much. I'm like, you already knew his life was too much and you still dated him and then broke up. Taylor. Taylor didn't. Okay, Taylor is a different a different story. I'm a Taylor hater. I, I will die on that hill that I'm a Taylor hater. Some people are Taylor defenders. I don't know how. Because she literally more than once wanted to sell out the 118 as being a bad firehouse. I don't even know why he dated her in the first place. Like, that is actually an insane thing that he did. And I will never understand why he dated her. Like, whenever I think of Taylor, I think you know that new Kendrick Lamar disc that just came out about Drake? It's like, I hate the way that you walk. Like, that's me. That's how I feel towards Taylor. Like, he, she's my least favorite ex ever. Like, she, oh, I couldn't stand her. You think about his past relationships and how people have left him because of, you know, different things. And I think Tommy is just so grounded and stable in his life that he's willing to settle down with Evan. And he's willing to ground him and keep him grounded and be the logical one in their relationship. That's why I think Tommy and Buck should be together and should be in game. Not because I hate Buddy. Because I don't really see a realistic way of them writing them together. You know, I think they're amazing as best friends. And I think it should stay that way. No offense. Like, so let's say they do end up putting Buddy together. Would I be mad? No. I would just be shocked because I would love to see how they would write that into existence. But I just think that Tommy and Buck are great. And I think they should be in game because fun, one, first of all, they need to settle Buck down with somebody. Like literally everybody else in the house is in a relationship except him. And I think I just want him to be happy. Literally, that's all I want. If they put him with Buck, if they put him with Eddie, I'll still be happy because Buck will be happy. That's literally all I want for Buck is him to just be settled down and happy with somebody. Literally. Hands down. Moving on from that little rant, we're going to move into episode six, which is the latest episode that just came out. So we don't get a lot of Tevin like content in this in this episode, but we get one thing that is very prominent that we will talk about. We first start off the episode with Chimney's bachelorette party that he didn't show up to and Tommy shows up to the bachelorette party and so when he walks in like eddie spots him first and he gives him a high five and then he goes to see buck and they hug and everybody on not everybody but a lot of people on tiktok were like oh my god eddie was so jealous of tommy like that he was there and 
I don't know if it was just me. I did not get that vibe that Eddie was jealous. I mean, he read him when he was like, Didn't know you could bring a date to a bachelor party. Hey, I knew Chimney before he was Chimney. Yeah. Also, he's not officially my date until the wedding tomorrow. Tonight is about Chimney. But his wedding is about you? Read him down. I will not lie. Read him down. Boots down. I was like, he's kind of right. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't get the vibe that Eddie was like jealous of Tommy. Like, I just didn't. But some people did, and I'm like, to each their own. I just, I, I just did not get that vibe. It's, this is a, such a small detail, but I noticed it, is when, like, so Chimney doesn't show up for the bachelorette party, and everyone's leaving, and Tommy's about to leave, and Buck's like, where's the fire? And he's like, in this place. I forgot what place he said. And he has to leave, and he's like, I'll, I'll literally try my hardest to be at the wedding. And Buck is obviously upset that he has to leave. And it's the look that Tommy gives Buck before he hugs him like it's such a subtle look but it speaks a thousand words to me i don't know what it says but it's the way he looks at him that is just so endearing and it literally pulled at my heartstring i'll try my damn to make it for the wedding <sighs> yeah okay it's almost like he was trying to apologize with his eyes but it was something else i don't know that was just a, a small detail that i picked up so then we skip to literally the end of the episode because we don't see Tommy again until the end of the episode. So Chimney and uh, Maddie are getting married in the hospital and they've had the ceremony and we pan to Buck and he gets a text on his phone. So he slips away from the ceremony for a second and he goes to see Tommy. And Tommy is bursting through the hospital doors, like still in his gear, literally dirt on his face, like from the fire. That is just so that in itself is so adorable that he didn't even i mean some people would say like oh my god he didn't even go like change like he's going to a wedding but like think about it the wedding is literally in a hospital and chimney is recovering from a disease from central america nothing about this is traditional so there was really no need for him to go home and change because he just wanted to get to buck as soon as possible sorry i'm late the fire was a beast so are you oh, hmm? And it's just the fact that he initiated the kiss that gets me like so giddy because it's like oh my god he's growing up so fast like look at where we are from episode four to episode six like so much has happened in between that time and it's just like so cute and as you realize that this is still the beginning of their relationship but like he's already becoming so comfortable with tommy that's how you know that I feel like in his other relationships, he has never been this comfortable and this happy. So that's why it's Tevin has literally taken over my heart. Because it's like, Buck has never been this happy in a relationship. And he's already becoming so comfortable. I just think it's really cool to see. And I love, I love to see that from him. So then after they kiss, he takes him into the room for, you know, cake or whatever, or the, the wedding. And he's like, oh. uh, look who almost made it. Congratulations, you two. I'm sorry, Mrs. Sarah. Thanks, Tommy. Yep, looks like you were busy. Buck is oblivious. My favorite part of this scene is when they pan to Hen and Karen, and Hen is like, Well, it's about damn town. Because <laughs> Hen is just the knower of all. Hen knows is so smart. She knows everything. I love Hen down bad i always say if hen leaves the firehouse the firehouse will fall apart like i think she is the glue of the firehouse she is just such an important valid character like to the 118 so he accidentally comes out to his family and his friends and everybody who didn't know and i'm curious to know if in the coming episodes if they're gonna let us know how his parents feel because if you watch the episode you they pan to his parents and they do not look particularly happy <laughs> at the fact that they you know might know something that buck doesn't know because his parents have been a problem before you know when when buck found out about his deceased brother and they're just bad parents and we all know this but i'm just wondering if they're gonna make a big deal out of it or if they're gonna like kind of just accept it I'm just curious. I wonder if they're going to tell us or if they're just going to leave it at that. So yeah, that was the end of season six. And that is my review of the past, what, four, three episodes, three, four, five, and six of season seven, because everyone has been talking about it and I've been wanting to review it. 
Um, and I felt like I had enough information now where I could review these episodes. Now, I will be willing, if anything else happens within the next, the rest of the episodes, I'll be willing to review and update you guys on what's happening with Tevin because I'm obsessed and they're literally taking over my brain. I know it's a, a bit weird that I'm like starting in the middle of season seven, but like it's just been like their view count has gone up because of this storyline, which I'm like slay because as it should. So I'm just really excited to see where this goes. I'm really hoping that Tommy sticks around because I think Tommy is great for Buck. Like I think he's in game material and I really hope he is in game. In the game. Um uh, I hope I didn't miss anything like there was just a lot that happened between in those four episodes and those were just the things that really stuck out to me the most. That has been my review for the four episodes in season seven. If you guys liked it make sure to give it a thumbs up subscribe and leave a comment down below on your thoughts about Tevin or Buddy or just the situation in general and what you think. I would love to know. I'm open to all opinions. If you're a Buddy shipper let me know how you feel. If you're a Tevin shipper let me know how you feel. If you're a multi shipper and you like both let me know just let me know how you feel because i'm interested and this show has taken over my life and i love it so much and i'm excited to see what the next episodes bring and if i can report back to you on any more tevin content that we may get let me know if you want more reviews from now on because i would i love to do reviews and i haven't done one in a while and i really enjoy just doing the research and typing up the notes to do it it's really fun to me so yeah thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video bye Thank <laughs> you.